and welcome to the Infinity Rose Podcast, the only podcast that is perfectly balanced as all things should be. My name is Jared, and I'm your host for today. Normally, you would expect the sweet and sultry tones of Isaac Edlund, or maybe the bullhorn that is Max Mosier, but no, you got me today. And joining me today, we have two Infinity Bros. Say hello to the fans at home, Mark Jones. Glad to be back to tickle the ears of the Infinity Bros universe. As I often do. Yeah, we're so, ready to be tickled. Glad to be here. Uh-huh. I do yeah. love getting tickled. Uh, you heard his voice because he loves speaking out of turn and we love him. It is Robbie Sauter. That's both accurate and slightly hurtful. It's okay. Uh, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. Uh, before Mark gets a chance to do it, I want to give a big shout out to my beautiful wife, Jessica, for allowing me to record podcast and uh, play video games and watch uh premiere episodes of uh, shows that we both enjoy and i want to give a bigger shout out to my even more beautiful wife kelly for just being awesome and just everything every way she's loved my life are we doing this is it okay uh i want to give a shout out to my incredible wife christian who is more beautiful than all of them combined um wow, and since okay. i went last obviously you guys can't refute that so um we have a pretty full schedule for tonight i was looking at it we were going to talk about hawkeye and the special premiere that Robbie got of Witcher Season 2. But I think this episode, we're just going to talk about our wives and compete uh, for an hour and a half, and I'm sure people would love to hear that. It's going to be Zane's favorite episode. Absolutely. (laughs) Zane can tell us all about his wife. Correct me if I'm wrong, is this the first time the three of us have been on together without all six? I believe I pointed that out in our group chat that I think this is our, the most unique lineup that we've ever had this is a momentous occasion. It is like, like this can be confirmed, confirmed. Like what would be a worse? What's a worse lineup? Uh, replacing any of us is a worse lineup. Obviously. Yeah. So this is arguably the best. Um, speaking of the best of the infinity bros, we have our hundredth episode coming up. Uh, if you're catching this before, January 2nd. Join us for our special 100th anniversary episode. Uh, it will be January 2nd at 8 p.m. Central on our Twitch channel. That's twitch.tv slash the infinity underscore the underscore the underscore infinity underscore bros. Gosh, we gotta yeah, fix gotta that. We have gotta that. like okay. lock that down. Join us there. Be there. Be square. We're gonna do some fun stuff with the live chat. Uh, who knows what we'll be talking about at that time. Probably more No Way Home stuff, even though that'll be a couple weeks past that point. Um, I just feel like No Way Home is going to shake everything up for a while. Uh, we might be playing some games. We probably will just be talking with our crowd. So if well, you're a fan at all. Will we be doing our Stan Lees for that, for that episode? Uh, are we? Is that what we're doing? Isn't See, this is why do? you need Max or and Isaac we... in charge, because they know what's going on. Um, I'm just going to put it out into are, the ether. We are, we are 100% doing, we are doing, doing the... our Stan Lees. Yeah, okay. for that episode. Hey guys, guess what? We're it's not only our hundred hundredth episode; it's also the end of the year slash yeah. beginning of the year episode where we do our recap of the, the previous Stanley. year. Stanley, you know, I know how much Jarrett wants to forget about the Stanleys with his take about you know, My fantastic Thor: The Dark World, Thor: The Dark World. Um, arguably some of the best VFX in uh, in the MCU, but uh, that's not a hill on. No one one's arguing today. besides you, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> we did have something special come up this week. Before we get into this special announcement, though, I'd like to plug our rating system right here. Here on the Infinity Bros podcast, everything is ranked from a 0 to 6 point scale. 0 meaning horrible, and 6 meaning absolutely excellent. If all of the Infinity Bros rank something a 6, it gets an infinity step. Alright, so I actually got an opportunity to uh, preview... Season two of The Witcher, but due to prior engagements, I shipped that off to probably the biggest fan of The Witcher, at least on this podcast, uh, good old Robbie Sauter, who is dressed for the occasion today. Robbie, you want to give us a quick recap of what happened? Like, what is this event that you attended? How did it go? So it was a Netflix uh, online premiere event, as obviously Jared knows, Um, but we got to go in. Uh, they showed a bunch of pictures, um, and the, you, you had to sit there for like 25 minutes as they waited for everyone to get in, and then and they just like wanted you to ask as many questions as possible in the little chat area on the side. So people were just asking questions, and they were saying that we're going to answer some of those questions. 
at the end of the uh, season premiere. Um, the cool thing is, is that at the end of season premiere, you got to ask those questions to none other than Superman himself, Henry Cavill, who is just such a, a ridiculously good looking man. Um, just, just why I want to give that big shout out to my wife is just, so I, I told her I was going to be on this and she was mad at me, not because I was like leaving her with the kids, but because I was going to get to watch a video with Henry Cavill in it. Um, and I think that's what she was more upset about. Um, the episode was fantastic. Uh, jumped you right back into the Witcher world. Um, got to see some few, a few monsters, a few really good stories, tied you back in and uh, really encapsulated what happened in season one. And, you know, you, you pick up right where you left off in season one and you're just, you're freaking Geralt and you are, it's beautiful. It was so good. I'm so excited for it. The this, It comes out uh, the 17th, so it's just a few days. So it's a, it's a few day early premiere, but exciting none the least for us to get a get the uh, opportunity to check that out. I'm obviously insanely jealous that I didn't get to see it. And my wife is insanely jealous that she didn't get to see it uh, because she's I'm also so happy a fan of you get to see it. Henry Cobble. <laughs> Hi! Um, I, I, I'm such a big... I'm like... So I finally got into The Witcher 3 a few years ago and like sure. played through it and put all the hours in. I was like, okay, I love this. Then The Witcher uh, show came on. I watched that. I was like, okay, I really love this. Then I started listening to like like four or five of the audio books. And it's like, I'm all in just on The Witcher lore. Yeah, you were definitely the right pick for this one. I, for me, it was less about... I Obviously, I love The Witcher, but I'm not on your level. I just wanted to talk to Henry Cavill um, and ask him if he would play Warhammer with me in D and D. But uh, yeah, you were you were obviously the right pick for this one. Funny, funny thing there, he had to like stop himself from going too like fangirl on the bit in the questions because he just started rambling off about Warhammer and like a bunch of that kind of stuff because that's all that a guy does. Like he's such he, a nerd. Like, yeah, he his biggest thing after after season one of The Witcher was just reading like fan forums about what they did in the witcher like that was his number one thing and he mentioned that like 20 times so like the dude is just a fan of all the things that you're a fan of he just looks like a greek god and you don't yeah he, he's a million times better looking at doing it yeah you anyone who is listening to this henry cavill looks better than you sorry yeah not sorry. that's not an argument that's a fact <laughs> so mark has ideas us in the infinity that. bros We've talked about um, The Witcher, obviously, at length. And if you want to go back and catch those episodes, you really should. Um, but just to give us a quick refresher, Mark, what was your rating of season one of The Witcher? Jeez, I don't even remember. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Um, so you, just, you just give it a six and you move on. I, yeah, I was going to say, I probably gave it a six because Henry, Henry Cavill was in it. And yeah, anyways, moving on. All right, give a point enough. to The Witcher. Um, Robbie, anything to add to that? I assume you also gave it a six. I did give it, I believe I gave it a six. Um, if people remember season one had basically two storylines that kind of converged at the end and you had like a, a past and a future storyline. Um, and a lot of people were very confused and kind of frustrated with it. Um, to my understanding, I, and I, I checked out, uh, J Buck's, uh, live, uh, TikTok stream earlier. Um, and he was talking that he actually got to watch like the first three episodes like a week ago of The Witcher and said that the storyline is much more linear. So like, so we got like three days head start and got one episode. J-Buck's so big that he got a, he got like three episodes and like a week and a half head start. So we're, we're not be quite J-Buck. so successful. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's awesome. Season one was fantastic. I think the only critique that anyone gave was it was a little hard to follow the time jumps. Um, and the fact that they fix that going forward means that they're paying attention to their fans and what they want, or maybe it's just happy coincidence that they fixed it in writing, but yeah, man, I'm excited. Uh, what did they say? The 17th that comes out officially on Netflix. Yep. The 17th. So, so we're ready to roll on this. In fact, by the time this is out and into the world, that might be already something that's streaming. So, uh, go check that out. Sounds fantastic. I'm sure the interview is up somewhere, uh, from your guys' questions that you asked at the Netflix premiere. Um, absolutely incredible. In fact, he was on the Graham Norton show and talking about some of his fandom 
and I know at least Twitter kind of blew up about this, and I believe TikTok as well, where he was talking about Warhammer and Graham Norton and the other people on the uh, on the that episode with him were kind of making fun of him. Um, but he is so into this stuff, Henry Colville, and it's why us as the Infinity Bros and the fans at large have been demanding more from him. You know, we'd like to see a uh, Man of Steel 2. We'd love to see him in the MCU in some fashion. So I'm going to pitch this one to you guys just real quick before we move on to Hawkeye. If you could bring Henry Colville into any other role, MCU or anything else even, uh, people have mentioned James Bond, what would that be starting with you, Robbie? Oh, any other role that he hasn't already been? Um, Because he's a really good Superman. I think he'd also, I think he'd also be a good Batman because he's doing all the brooding already in The Witcher. Um, but you know what? Marvel probably needs their shot at him. I could go. Is it? I'm, I don't want to butcher the name. The big golden guy from. From uh no actually 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 no 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 okay <laughs> no no uh impossible I think he could be. Omni Man. Oh, okay. I've seen that fan Henry casting quite a bit. Omni Man. Yeah, that I I would I'd be all in on that because then he basically gets to play Superman, but like murder but me. everyone. <laughs> but Superman. Mean. That's wild. So uh, and he, so then he would actually get to mix a little bit of his Geralt of Rivia and his Superman, and just mix it into one BA character. That that's my pick, Omni Man. Mark, what about you? Um, my first thought that came to mind when he asked that, even though I've thought about this before, uh, but this is totally new, new, new thought. Him coming in as Cyclops in the MCU, uh, leading the X-Men. Because I think if you're going to bring Henry Cavill in in the MCU and he's going to be a good guy, you have to have him be like a leader of a group. I love that, and I also hate it just because I hate Cyclops. But yeah, everyone Cyclops gives Cyclops blows. hate, and like when Cyclops you guys, blows. when all of you guys talk bad about him in the group chat, I have to like be like silent and just watch, like as a watcher, as you like rip him apart. And I'm just like, oh, that's that's one of the guys I liked growing up. That's because there's nothing to defend. What are you going to defend? Uh, I don't want to get he, you guys mad because then I start making fun of you guys. I will obvious. say, I love. Um... <laughs> I attack you because I don't have anything to fight with. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, he's uh, uh, he's got laser eyes. Uh, but they're not lasers. He's got laser uh, eyes. The Cyclops. Okay, okay. You know, we don't have a lot to talk. But sure. We can get in the weeds on this. Yeah. What other abilities does Cyclops have? Like all he mutants, have... he has like enhanced durability. Um. Yeah, and like strength and sure, stuff. Sure, like but that. it really Ooh. is just like the kinetic blast. Oh, yeah. And the thing yep, is, they're is. not lasers. He can't cut stuff with oh, them. They're just like and, punch and really that, hard. Yeah. It's like Kamehameha blasts, yeah. basically. But like, so that's the like thing. It's like he also can't Goku. control it without the goggles yes. or the, the eyepiece. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the other thing. Like his, like his brother can control his, his kinetic stuff. Cyclops Good is point. like maybe one of the worst superheroes that's popular. I'm just gonna put that out there. He's maybe one of the worst superheroes. When you say worst, you mean like as in like power set, as in like like power set, so, and then his so like I'm his like of... his like rank ability to people that like him. That's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. So like the people that he hangs out with. So like the X Men core. Okay. Like compare him, the Avengers core, the the Justice League. Yeah. Like the, so you you say he's he's level. lesser than like Jubilee who shoots fireworks or like Beast who's just Dazzler. You know, and then the name. It, Okay, but okay, are we are we I'm counting like the main if you had to only pick like eight out of each group, like he'd be in the top eight for the X-Men, right? He did and just like, Well, let's hey, riddle me this. You give you give Cyclops an Iron Man suit that can also, you know, sh- sure. Well, now you know, we're use his kinetic like, energy. Now we're just making Now we're just doing up. whatever. Well, now it's counting. I mean, Tony's because, nothing. I mean, Tony's I mean, really nothing without about, a suit. If you talk about Tony Tony Stark, you just take the suit away and he's nothing. So like yeah. Well, he still doesn't have he can't shoot beams out of his eyes. <laughs> About his suit, so neither can Cyclops. Lot, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but at least he's interesting. He, control is. he is interesting. Yeah, Cyclops did also gets, murder Xavier sometimes. for no reason. Yeah, well, you did. Wait, Cyclops. what? Happens. He murdered Charles. Xavier. Yeah, Charles Xavier. That's never gonna get in a movie, though. Yeah, yeah, but know what else? He's never done that. Tony Stark's done Please. heroin. <laughs> do, we, do we know that? Do we know that? For Isn't a there fact? a whole series? Isn't there a whole? St- oh yeah, I guess with no. Uh, I mean about Cyclops. Scott do Summers. Know, do we know that? Yeah, I don't. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, there's. I don't think that. I don't. I can't think of a storyline where that is. He probably. He probably did Scott some Summers. wild stuff in space with his dad <clears throat> and the Star Jammers. I'm sure they did some heroin up there. 
don't know. Maybe. I stick by my statement. Yeah, Cyclops, Cyclops is garbage. one of the worst popular superheroes. <sighs> I want I want Henry just Cavill know. in a 40k movie. I want him to make a 40k movie, and I want Henry Cavill as whatever the lead character is. That's what I want to see. I don't know what that is. Warhammer. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I didn't Warhammer. want to assume. I'm not yeah, that big of a geek. Sorry, Warhammer 40k. Goodness gracious, Jared. Yeah, I was thinking. Um, I was like, I'm pretty sure he means a Warhammer <laughs> movie, but like. I don't know if there's something like yeah. weird anime that he knows that That's we don't what know. I was, th- I was thinking of like, is that a weird anime that I I'm blinking? Oh on? my gosh! <laughs> Put him. Don't, they should true. never do live action anime. But like him is uh, Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist. Mm. Uh, mm. So good. Okay. Ooh, that, oh no! Could you? Could you? Henry Henry Cavill as Napa? Please, please, and thank you. Kind of like. But that. see again, you don't want to cast him as a character that just dies. Yeah. It'd be kind of funny if he was Napa and like Matt Damon was Vegeta. <laughs> well, now I'm in. And Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Say, okay. I don't care. I think it'd what be funny. What if the MCU <laughs> finally gets Henry Cavill, right? And then they pull like okay. a James Gunn, the Suicide Squad, and he's just gone like that. Like first scene, he's mm, out. Yeah. Well, well see, well, I, I, that'd be funny. Yeah, like yeah. when they the Deadpool movie with Brad Pitt. Yeah. I think he's probably. I think he's actually too. He's too big at this point. Like, if you get a Henry yeah. Cavill, like, that's almost like pull. It's not quite The Rock, but he's... Sure. The people love Henry Cavill. Well, that's what I'm saying. You have to have him be a new leader for a team. What's... Okay, what's... The guy that I first thought of was... Uh, uh, is it Sentry? He's like yeah. Superman for Yeah, basically Marvel. the Superman of MCU, yeah. yeah. That's what I thought that, like, if Marvel would to get were to get him, they would just put him in that role, but that's kind of like... Who would... Okay. Too much on the nose. I love this, though. Yeah. Who would play the Void? The, like alter ego that lives inside of Sentry. The darkness that, like, he's afraid of consuming him. Oh, um... Oh, gosh, what's his name? Nick he's... Kroll. Nick Kroll. Oh. <laughs> I would Big love enough. that, but also, like, no. What's the guy from uh, Serenity, the guy that, that passes away? What's his name? I'm blanking. Oh, um, Alan Tudyk? Yes! Oh, my gosh! Robbie! Yes. That's so good! <laughs> Put Alan this man Tudyk in Hollywood, inside Robbie, That's with. perfect. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, but he's already played a character in the MCU. He could be a voice. Okay. Wait, who did he oh, play in the right. MCU? Yeah, he wait. plays like the doctor that gets uh, um, Steve Rogers the juice. What? Did he? Oh, you said. I'm thinking of. Uh, no, Alan I'm thinking Tudyk. Of I'm, like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of Stanley Tucci. That's who I thought oh. of right away. <laughs> okay, yeah. I was oh, like, my no, goodness. No, 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 no. Yes, Alan Tudyk would be also great. But does he do his his actual voice, or does he do a voiceover? Oh gosh, he would do because he's also a voiceover voice. actor. So I think they well, CGI him be great as a voiceover, way. and maybe do like motion capture yeah. or something. I don't think they like paint him black. Gosh, we're what so off we the rails. <laughs> we're off the rails. We are we're so fun. far. This was worth it. If you're still sticking with us, we're, you're like a True way. Blue Infinity Bros fan. Oh, yeah, they continue going deep in these weeds. You cast him to do a voice role in What yes. If, and yeah. you do like two more seasons with him, and then you finally bring him in as a live action as a character. That. I love that so much. Or put him in the yeah. background of like Miss Marvel somewhere and let fans go wild. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> moving on to Hawkeye. We're on episode four. Have you guys been on to talk about Hawkeye yet? This would be my first time. Okay, Mark. Hit me with your thoughts so far. Spoiler free for anyone who made it this far and hasn't watched. Um, I'm just happy that we got a legit Christmas MCU show. Oh, and it's so in there. It's like and it's so. It's in not Christmas. just a dabble, a, a dab of Christmas. Like Christmas is a character in the show. Basically. I love it. It's so good. Absolutely. And I also love that we're you know, just we're dealing with uh some of Hawkeye's past and some of the stuff with his wife that you kind of are thinking like, Oh, you know, she obviously knows more than what we were probably led on. So that's been interesting. The characterization for Hawkeye in this, and obviously like they've been building up to this through Endgame, but I feel like they really, really, really are doing a good job of making him not just the boring character that everybody thought he was before this. Because, like, I've talked to people who are outside of the scope of the MCU, don't really care or watch these shows, and they're like, why on earth would I want to watch a Hawkeye TV series? Like, that's garbage. I don't want to watch it. But those same people are also coming back and saying, like, I love the characterization. I love what they're doing with this and that. Um, Robbie, what do you think? What's your rating? 
Um, oh, we're doing ratings. I think right now my rating's sitting at a five. I think I'd give it. Um, I'm really enjoying it. There. So at the beginning, I know Max had mentioned that he was really loving. Oh no, I was okay. I was on one. I would think I was on the first. Um, the one, episode one and two with Max and Isaac, and Max was like all in on like all the jokes or something like that, which is fine. The jokes were fine. Um. But I was really waiting for like this episode when we got a little like darker because Hawkeye as a character is awesome, but like this is post Ronan Hawkeye, so like this can't be all cheerful and happy. Like we gotta get he's gotta atone for what he's done. Yeah, we gotta and, like we gotta peel back those layers and talk about it a little bit. Um, so before we even get to this next episode, that was that's that was my favorite part of this most recent episode that i can't wait to talk about so i'm really enjoying it awesome yeah mine it, mine is obviously a six out of six but i'm such a fangirl for this stuff that like you knew that was gonna it would happen. have been pretty bad for yeah. you to not rate it a six out of six <laughs> it'd have to be like ralph boner bad for me to not give it a six oh gosh um let it go <laughs> all right <laughs> let's let's just go through this together um off the bat we see a pickup from where the last episode left off. You have Clint uh, with the sword to his throat and Jack, you know, questioning what he's doing there. I really, really, really thought this was going to lead into like a cool action sequence. And they just like deflate it the moment it happens. Um, what did you guys think about this sort of softer open than maybe what we expected? I totally expected. I, I actually loved it because I was watching with my beautiful wife, Kelly. And she's like, they better not go like what they usually do and tell a little bit backstory instead of just bringing us right back into the action. I'm like, yeah. that's what they're going to do. That's what the MCU does. And that wasn't the case this time. And then we also didn't get a fight. It was just like broken up or like, not broken up. Like, you know, everyone was home. So they were I, so I they were so chill about everything. Like, oh, yeah, it was just an adventure in our house. And then the conversation that they have around the table was kind of weird pacing but i guess it kind of worked because it felt like how these conversations would actually go as opposed to more yes. forced style. it felt very more real than it felt scripted yeah. i agree like that's exact and the other thing with this like opening scene it very much made me think like they're trying to make a swerve like her, that the fiance is gonna be the bad guy but i really think it's gonna be the mom who ends up being the bad guy at the end of this yeah she is definitely like pulling some sort of strings here or it's working um, for kingpin or something i don't know yeah there's something going on because it, yeah because they keep kind of pointing us in the direction of the guy i don't think it's the guy kind of like what mark was saying yeah um, they're, they're dangling that to pull it under the pull the yeah. rug under us and, and maybe hey maybe they're like the people are gonna think that we're trying to get him but we're actually not and it actually is that guy but then that I don't know if that's a lazy or genius, really. Yeah. Um, he's maybe he's just a guy that just likes swords. Okay. And, and then does just does Hake like I didn't like Hake had to notice the sword was Ronin's. Yeah, that's his. that's why they they made like they like pod a little pause and he like looked yeah. at it and everything. And he obviously like before he leaves he ends up swiping it so he yeah. he knew that it was his. Um, we kind of go forward from that scene uh, where they're kind of questioning what he's doing there and. They talk about the mission that they're on together. And obviously, like, Kate is sold out on the idea that they're a team, that they're the Hawkeye team working together. Clint wants nothing to do with it. And it sort of shows his character, especially when he's about to leave, that his concern, he's not shooting her down out of uh, any sort of ill will towards her. It's really because he knows the cost of people being around him. And obviously, like, that's emphasized further down the line. Um, we switch from this to him talking with his wife on the phone, trying to dig up some information there uh, about what's going on behind the scenes with Jack uh, and, and what's going on with the tracksuit mafia. And we get some interesting dialogue here. We obviously, we see that Laura knows several languages. I don't know what language they're actually speaking in, but she also kind of alludes to the fact that there's more to her history than what we've been shown so far. What do you guys think about this and who do you guys think she is? I, I I really don't know because I don't know that much about as nearly as much about Hawkeye as you do, Jared. Um, but they they've done a good job at like 
not sh- letting her show too much. Yeah. And now they're kind of being like, oh, she's actually like part of this. And that's why she's like really okay with it and like totally understands. So I'll let you guys take the reins on this. Mark, what do you think? Go. Go. Yeah, I'm still up in the air. I'm st- <laughs> Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm also gonna pass it off to you, Jerry, because I feel like this is this is your band. Yeah. So, so what with is, what's what a good a uh, uh, series of dialogue. I love that. That's what I know. This is this is what this is what Scott Higo wants. He loves dialogue. I like pass this. the plate around, and you guys all spit in it before giving it back to me. Um, I just imagine like the seventh was it the seventh warrior d- down in the weeds with like Antonio Banderas when he's fighting with the Vikings, and they're all cleaning their face, and like they spit in it, and they hand it to him, and it's just like that's just normal. Yeah. And that's what we just did. We just washed our face in this water and just pawned it back off to each other and then gave it to you, Jared. That was that was quite the that's graphic. That's interesting. There, Mark. So <laughs> I, I know this has been floating around there. Um there is a mockingbird in um in uh Agents of Shield, obviously. But that's kind of been kicked out of the MCU, according to Kevin Feige. So there's a potential that <laughs> that's what that is. Get out. Hold on, go ahead. No, I just, I'm just. Funny. You don't belong yeah, here. They just Kevin Feige's like, we liked you in the beginning, and then we decided, nah, <laughs> better not. Out. So obviously, like, there's that portion of it. People are suggesting that maybe she's a Black Widow, which I think is a load of bull. Um, yeah, I don't think that. I think that remains to be seen. I'm not going to speculate too hard on this one because I don't want to go down another Mephisto situation. Um, maybe she's Mephisto. I think she's. I, I do think she's like. <laughs> a secret Mephisto? agent or something maybe a shield agent we'll see beyond that oh you're um, thinking sh- oh. Hmm. could be shield okay. I, I mean there's so much to this that I, I mean, i'm that not gonna make sense right? yeah. yeah uh the other thing is they mentioned sort of the MacGuffin of this episode which is the watch uh that was left at the avengers compound and they make a point to state that it's close it's somebody close to him that it belongs to um what do we think this is because they have talked nothing about this. They showed it once in the first episode and then have just kind of left it be. Whose watch do we think this is and what is on it? And it has to be someone close to him, right? So then we're, right. we're thinking like it has to be one of the Avengers. Right. So, and I don't think it'd be Black Widow. It's like I never see her wearing a Rolex. So it's like, who does that leave us with? Is it's it probably Tony either Tony or, or Bruce Steve. Banner would be my guess. Oh, not Steve? Well, Steve, I don't think Steve was a flashy guy to wear Rolex. But yeah, I mean... That, that would track, though. My, that, that was just my deduction. Sure. And it could be like a recording device that somebody wore once. Uh, uh, there is a comic issue called The Tape. And the MacGuffin in that is there's a tape that shows an Avenger killing somebody. Um, and so my thought is this is a watch that's recorded. Maybe the assassination that um, Hawkeye and Black Widow did. Spoilers for Black Widow. Uh, maybe this is a recording of Steve Rogers doing something, uh, and maybe that's been manipulated to look worse than it ac- actually is. This one remains to be seen. For my money, I think it has to do either with Natasha or with um, Laura. Uh, because they keep bringing her into this, I think maybe his wife did something, and that's why it's on there. But she doesn't seem as concerned, so that theory doesn't hold as much water. Any more thoughts on this? So, so you're thinking that the watch has something negative against someone else, not even, not against him, but like a recording against someone that has in this, you know, in the limelight, a good rapport and this would bring more negativity. I think it would absolutely, it's something whoever. that would absolutely crush the Avengers if it ever released. And it's one of the big well, ones. That's, well, that's my would, uh, opinion. This could lead down the line to Avengers disassembled. So, you know, maybe I would love that. That's a really creative title. Um, <laughs> thank you just thought of it right off the top of my head <laughs> just thought of that <laughs> just thought of that my first thought and maybe this is like i don't know anything about any of this but i was like is that like a tony stark like iron man suit watch because he has those oh that would be sweet but like that wouldn't really lead sure. to anything i just i don't know unless i, I hear avengers compound and it's a watch so. unless like fisk gets his hands on it and we get like a a iron patriot from the comics where you know somebody becomes the mayor of new york and uses the iron man suit to terrorize people um 
All right, we go from this. this, whole, this oh, sorry, go ahead. I gotta, I gotta go back yes. into the weeds one more time. One more time in the weeds, we go. I, I hope, I hope they divulge in either this series or somewhere else down the line, where the Avengers compound was just like left and just left to people to come scavenge it. Like that just seems wild to me that like the government wouldn't come off and quarantine it, or was there like a period of time like right after all the events happened that it was just like up in there because so much crap was going on because half the population returned. Tony died, saw the heroes are just depressed and went on their own ways. Like that's one of my favorite things like- that they did in um, the first Spider-Man when they talked about Vulture as just like they mm-hmm. left this crap everywhere, and that's how he made yep. his living, and that's how he became. And it took what like a couple years before the government stepped in and was like, "You can't, you just can't do this anymore." That's fa- I love so, that so much. Showing some of that behind. So the I guess scenes you know. Stuff. Yeah, good. If you're good, right, good point, Mark. Hey, with that, th- thanks for bringing that back up. So yeah, I'm sure something like that probably is happening or has happened. Right. Well, I mean, Tony obviously didn't leave any money for any of them because, you know, they can't even, like, afford to fix a boat, right? So, you know... They're all broke. Tony kind of, you know... I, 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 I voice my opinions on Tony on here. Tony, like, well, screwed I the mean, pooch with I mean, you could also Avengers. give some of that blame to Pepper. I was going to say, Pepper Potts so. is also still alive and is head of the yeah, company. But that's true, but, like, Pepper <laughs> doesn't care about them. Those aren't her sure. friends. And also, she probably five, just like, those, those are just were my, Tony's Those are friends. just my, my deceased husband. And guess what? Friends. Now he's dead. And I'm what sure a lot of... A villain? I'm sure a lot of financial decisions and, like, writings, like, wills and trusts and stuff like that changed in the five years after the first snap. Yeah. So I think that also probably plays into it, too. That's Because that's been the thought I've been throwing back and forth, is that's why there's no money to get, be given, because it was all changed up when, basically, there I was no more adventures, don't. so... I, I've 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 ridden this horse, but I just don't get it. Like, you're an Avenger and you're struggling with money. Like, I just think it's a load of BS. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> Even if you were a war criminal, you literally saved the universe. I'm sure there's like like, <laughs> like Nike would sponsor a super well. He says that in goodwill. So yeah, and isn't that kind of what Kate's trying to do? It's like you gotta like brand yourself. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe that's what we'll get. We'll get a little bit of, uh, you Kate know, what happens it. in The Boys, where some of these superheroes are being I'm branded. I'm all in on it. <laughs> yep. Just, Just it. make it The Go Boys. For it. All right. Um, we'll make it The Boys. We roll from this into a interesting scene with uh, Kate and her family, and she sort of sees the intimacy that Jack shares with her mother, and they have a nice dance. And during this, she notices that Hawkeye is feeling lost and alone without his kids on Christmas. And so that's where we really get christmas as a character in this series uh she goes over to confront him and spend time with him on christmas under the guise of hey we got to plan our next step with these bros we, sorry go and we're still two days from christmas right like in the series yes i believe so okay okay um a nice heartwarming moment they had a few jokes from the comic books in there uh the boomerang arrow which is one of my favorites yep uh it's sort of inversed in the comic books he has to try to explain to kate why this is useful um obviously we get the opposite of that and then he teaches her the coin trick which is famous from the comic books as well um after we roll into this uh they do their sort of celebration and as they're talking she asks him what his favorite or what his best shot he took was and he he says the famous line that the best shot i ever took was the one that i didn't um talking about natasha um an amazing character moment there and we sort of see the dichotomy that they've been building and and sort of what this means for both of them to kate hawkeye is a symbol right it's a thing for people to look up to it's more than just who clint is it's it's a whole movement and a powerful message for clint hawkeye is all of the things that he did wrong right it's it's him he said i was a weapon and they just aimed me so he doesn't view, they view these as two separate things. And I think this plays out really well. What do you guys think about this whole storyline that they're doing with Kate and Clint where she is in on, go ahead. I think it's, it's like almost perfect. It's like, yeah, we get the, you know, that someone who was a child who grew up with these people and like, oh, like, you know, obviously the probably the media only showed the good stuff. So it's like, yeah, of course to her, Hawkeye is a hero in that sense. Like obviously, cause he is a hero. But, like, you know, as Clint is, he's like, yeah, Hawkeye's basically a trained killer. Like, he's probably done a lot, as he kind of alludes, done a lot of stuff he's not proud of. And especially as Ronan, did a lot of things. Did a lot of killing. So, 
like to him, he doesn't think Hawkeye probably doesn't think Hawkeye is, should be a symbol of like a hero or whatever, where Kate's in the opposite boat where it's like, yeah, you, you should, you know, totally brand yourself and make Hawkeye, you know, out into the world and be popular and stuff like that. So, well, that's always like the interesting thing with Marvel in general in these movies is that they don't like make a very big deal about that. These heroes kill people. Yeah. <laughs> like, all the time absolutely <laughs> um and it's like kind of just washed under the rug and, and no one really cares um so it's kind of interesting for them to actually deal with those repercussions and actually have a hero like reliving their past because how many people did tony probably kill and like it's never brought up it's totally fine he's totally fine with it tony's um, yeah tony's ptsd is like entirely about new york city and the aliens it's never ever well, it's about, about the it's, people. It's about Tony. Yeah, it's about Tony. And, and Clint's is like, no, you don't. You don't understand the blood that's on my hands and the things that I did when I thought right. half of the world was gone. Well, and heck, think about. I mean, Steve was in freaking World War II. Yeah, How yeah. many Nazis do? Yeah, you absolutely. And 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 I know we're all. Everyone's all for killing Nazis, but like, right. like <laughs> of course, like the, of course, like that's, <laughs> that's the right. one thing like anyone can kill. And it's everyone's hard like, to argue. It, it's fine. They were a Nazi, but like. That, that's an interesting thing that Marvel just does not deal with is just these heroes kill people and yeah. it's normal. Yeah. And maybe um, that's, that alludes to the watch. Maybe, maybe that'll be brought up that later. That would make sense. Cause they are dealing with a lot of like Ronan's past death, which, and we got a little bit of that in, uh, okay. Now oh, I just, now I do have a thought in, about the watch. And was it winter soldier? Which one's the one where, or was it the Ultron movie where, um, Wanda like blows up, a portion of that building by trying to throw um, yeah what's his uh, yeah. face well yeah. that was an age of ultron yeah, and yeah he like ultron. she like hurt some people and it made the news and that oh she didn't hurt people she, she killed people they blew it by up accident that, yeah that apartment building. yeah but okay but like she killed people and it made the news and they were all like you know it was a whole so like what deal. would have to top that for heroes to be like did did like Oh no! Bruce sorry, Bruce Banner War. going to like a children's hospital, like blow it up or something like that. Like, what's what's what could be worse than defame? Well, what these I'm heroes? what now I'm assuming I'm, is on the watch because I just had this thought is that I bet it's it's something showing like Hawkeye showing Clint like mm. in the Ronan outfit. Can I go? Oh, like, can I, I go really into the weeds is. with this one just for a second? Or her, yeah. him taking off the his mask when Natasha yeah, taking off the hood or something confronted like, him in. Okay, my guess okay. is go on, Jared. Not my guess. My what I would, if I could fan cast this and do whatever I wanted with it, we know that She Hulk is coming up. We also know that Daredevil is coming back into the MCU, right? There is a famous She Hulk run where there is evidence that Captain America got somebody killed, and She Hulk and Daredevil face off in the courtroom. She Hulk is defending Captain America. Daredevil is trying to prove that he got this guy murdered. What if that's what's on the watch? Is evidence that Captain America got an innocent man killed? Also, if you haven't read that comic, it's fantastic. Go check it out. But like, and and the go but like Captain the America weeds. isn't around anymore. So what are they? He's defending? on the moon. He's on the moon. Plus, yeah, like that's public perception. Duh, duh. He's an old man. He's an old man in the comic too. So like, yeah, technically he's still he's still in that universe somewhere as an old man. So. Yeah, he's an old man in the comic um, book too. So like, to, it works. To, sound, yeah. to, to go into the other field of the weeds, please. Does She Hulk oh, there's in, there's in use previous comics as her defense because she can four, four wall break and has a defense team that uses previous comics how stuff was defended there? Does does that happen in She Hulk? She does it. She does in her older runs. In the newer runs, they kind of don't do that as much. <sighs> um, it's Whack. a little more yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she did that. A I thought lot. I thought that would be funny. Yeah. Well, she Hulk's supposed to be a comedy, you know, so it could happen. <laughs> well, I mean, now if she if she breaks the fourth wall, then I'm a little more interested. If she's yeah, just... she's I think she fourth wall wall break before uh, Deadpool did. So, well, then I I wasn't more interested, but then Jared killed that, so I guess you know we'll be uh -huh. skipping that. Okay, back, we let's get out of the weeds. To, okay, but okay, <laughs> we were talking before the show about things we need to talk about. We haven't even talked to that like the news of like daredevil like charlie cox is returning as daredevil i know like we're, we're talking hawkeye but like that's well kevin Feige's gonna hawkeye. tell us that before he shows up in this show or in spider-man yeah, let's, let's, let's take a two-second pause because we're halfway through the hawkeye 
and we'll talk just briefly about what you guys think about this news. Mark, go first. Big news. I say if he's going to bring Daredevil in and like, you know, you know, Daredevil we see on Netflix, you bring in another, you bring in them all. You bring all the Netflix people, even Iron Fist. So we no, talk, no, I'm against this now. We talked about okay. our percentage. Or you can recast Iron Fist. What we but like, I want that. I want the other ones. What? Per, how sure are you that Vincent D'Onofrio is going to be in this? Oh, oh, that's a hundred. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty. Like we already should. We already disappointed like if you didn't bring hands. him back. Yeah. His, his version of Kingpin in. Like, what was that? What was that scene where he's like rubbing the like little girl's cheek? Is that what it was? Yeah. So it's 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 that's hundred percent kingpin. Yeah, so we knew kingpin yeah, was going to be in this, according to like rumors and speculation on the internet. And this all but puts the nail in that coffin. We he, Vincent D'Onofrio will show up in this series. Um, you can quote me on that in the future. Yeah, I'll find him. I will find him. Um, fantastic news. I do think we're going to get uh, more of the defenders down the line. We'll see about Iron Fist. Um, Okay. I really just want Mike Coulter back as, oh my as Power Fist. That's really just all. That's another one I really just want Did back. Did you just say Power him. Fist? Okay, oh, my power, bad. What? Power Man. Power huh? Fist? Power Man, right? Power Man. My bad. I said Fist, didn't I? Yeah, you're good. Power Fist. Right. I like that. That's a dope superhero name. Um, all right. We roll forward a little bit. Uh, back to Hawkeye. We roll forward a little bit, <laughs> and they're kicking off the mission. Uh, he sends Kate to go track down his trick arrows. Um, and they end up in Gil's apartment and they have sort of this interesting interaction with the LARP group. What did you guys think about these guys as like additional characters to this? I did not see them bringing them back. Like I was, I was a little shocked by that. Uh, and, and they were also like all in on just breaking the law. Yeah. <laughs> and one of them was like a cop. They were so cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. What hey, was, yeah, I got those arrows. I'll go get them for you. But like, yeah, just like, random this person just up. came up and was like, "I work with Hawkeye. I need you to like yeah. break the law and like risk your job and get me these." But arrows. do you think in this world, if like an Avenger is like, "Hey, you guys have some of my arrows," but it wasn't can an I get Avenger. Them? That Kate it was just a him. chick. Like Kate it was, was the one who started just, the conversation. Yeah, but yeah. but they knew he was there, and they promised. Like she also promised a showing with him. So like a, like yeah, sure. I think she'd be more willing. I get I get what you're saying, but but yeah, like a police officer, they'll be like, yeah, I'll go break him out. Um, yeah, it was like she didn't even have to like argue. She was just like, <laughs> I work with Hawkeye. I need you to give me arrows, and I you I, can meet I him. love these okay, guys. Cool. And I think it's I do too. I think it's great that it continues to show that that difference between Kate and Clint. Where she's like, yeah, they're part of the Hawkeye team now. And Clint's like, absolutely not. Screw these guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, the scene is great. Do you think one of them comes back as like, like they're a secret hero or something? Or Gosh, like you get that. the whole LARP team helping out at the end? Like, I just feel like something like that's going to happen. I would love. What if everyone can't be a hero? Let's make. Yeah, everyone let's can make be Gil a hero. That's the MCU. Online. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we have the short scene with Clint where he tracks down Kazi and has the conversation warning that um, Maya is chasing a ghost um, and basically says if she doesn't back off, she will get hurt. She doesn't know what she's doing. Um, they they throw a few jokes in here, but mainly this part, point of this scene is like he wants her out of the picture and not dealing with this mess. Obviously, that kind of goes by the wayside shortly after that. Um, we shoot forward and we go to the retrieval scene. They break into an apartment to try to find out what's going on. Um, obviously Kate sort of jumps the gun and goes in herself. I, leaving I, ha- I hate, I hate that so much that she's like, she's not a teenager. She's like what? 21 or something like that. She's technically something an like adult. That, yeah. So like, I just hate that. Like her, like her mentality is of like a rich spoiled kid, which she is. So like, I get it right. where she just like, can't take direction at all. And kind of just like, throws a monkey wrench to the whole thing she's constantly trying to prove herself to i know and it's so. just like oh like, that's the only like thing that kind of saves that moment but yeah i was frustrated by it as well i was like you're with an avenger and like like listen to the avenger yeah. <laughs> he just taught you how to knock someone out with a penny like yeah. maybe we should <laughs> listen to this guy let the let this guy do the do the work so <laughs> she goes in obviously the lights start flashing which which we find out pretty quickly is signaling to Echo that somebody's broken into the house. She snatches the watch, and in the process of her fight with Echo, 
Um, somebody attacks Clint on the roof, and that Who whole fight scene breaks out. It shows us that um, Yelena is involved in this, oh, gasp. and they have their whole fight sequence. Obviously, Clint trying everything he can to get her out of the picture. Uh, Kate, that is. Um, and then there's... Actually, let's break down the fight first. What did you guys think of this whole fight scene? Lackluster. Yeah? Yeah, I'm... Yeah. I, I'll be honest. That, I've yep, been kind that's of, all I gotta say. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been kind of disappointed in Echo. I'm not gonna... like. I know you really like her, Jared, but like they have not done much with her. Like She gets in I fights, agree. and it's just like okay she's struggling with a 22 year old like martial artist and the, like i don't know i'm just not very impressed like if she's supposed to be the big bad or the you know the one that they meet throughout these this series like then it's a little bit of a letdown if that's if that's it as far as like what we've gotten from the other series um obviously like falcon and the winter soldier did this better um, it is really hard to like this fight. I think it's okay, not great. And with the caliber that we've come to expect from the MCU, it was a bit of a disappointment. I would very much agree with that. Um, we get this scene it was where CWS. Yeah, that bad? that's bad. That's like, that's, that's, that's bad. not that's not high praise. You don't want that. Um, and, and there is sort of like the when she gets kicked off the side and he you know makes it to where she falls down below and he's like, get out of here. You know, he does the whole scram. And then, like, two seconds later, she's back on the roof again because she just goes <laughs> up the stairs. Um, I mean, it was only, like, a four-story building. Yeah, it was so... But it was so fast. Like, there was no consequence to her falling. It was just, like, scram. Well, she landed in those in those uh, lights, those, the basically. Lights, yeah. Right, but, like, she wasn't down there very long. She was immediately right back up. So, like, what was the point of that beat? She's probably got the adrenaline pumping, sure. bro. Um, yeah, but, yeah, I get what you're saying because, like, you're supposed to get, like the weight of her falling and not getting back there. Right. And like you, you leaving Hawkeye to fight by himself, you know, assuming that's going to lead to something else, but she just, she's just there. <laughs> she's just back up. Like, so there was, there, there was literally no weight put into him, like cutting her loose. Like, yeah. Like at first there was, and it was immediately gone. <laughs> um, so they, they have their fight obviously. And then Yelena books it, Echo books it. And he talks about how Kate is now done, right? She's in over her head. And the thing that tips him off is you now have a Black Widow assassin after you. This struck me for a couple of reasons. One, he doesn't know who she is. He doesn't understand that there's a connection between her and Black Widow, which is interesting because Black Widow was the only person that knew every secret about Clint. But Clint had no idea who this Black Widow was. And more interesting is he now thinks that Elena is after Kate, not him. Um, what do we think about this realization? I think it made a uh, Black Widow actually like as a movie kind of useful. Sure. Like, what did you guys think know, about? Black now Widow? we know who. Now we know who that character is, and and that's it. That's all I care about for Black sure. Widow. That's. Right. I love Black Widow. I thought it was a great comic book movie. I thought it was great too, was, but I, I yeah. understand the critique even if I don't fully... It was a few years too late. I think that's, it should have came out... That's my biggest... That's probably my It should have came out critique. after Civil War. That's when it should have yeah. came out. Like, if that came out after Civil War, I probably, you know, I enjoy it probably quite a bit more, but it came out after the, like, anything that matters <laughs> happened so like i don't care <laughs> i think black widow also would have been better had they fixed taskmaster but that's a gripe for another time i also agree but i think that might have been a setup to like you know someone else getting the suit right. so going like forward that. what do we think is going to happen next obviously they had their spat elena's now involved in hunting down Clint. Do we know how many episodes they're gonna there's gonna be? Like, are we that like the last question. two episodes? Like, believe, are there only gonna be six, or are there gonna be eight? Seven, so it's let like, me check that real quick. Because I feel I like would, when I've looked, yeah. I haven't seen any number. So it's like, yeah, like you know, if we know that, it's like, well, if it there's eight or seven episodes, like, well, this next one's gonna be a more lead up instead of like, hey, we're gonna have to finally get to the final crescendo and get like a set up the you know final episode. But okay, it looks like six I, my, episodes in total. So when the so final right, two, okay. yeah, but yeah. they had they had a sneaky set like extra episode with uh, what was it Falcon the Winter Soldier that they didn't tell us about right away? 
Like, so was there only supposed to be five that. originally? With all I think they're playing fast character? and loose with this, and, and they're kind of just doing whatever. Because obviously, like, Kevin Feige told us that all of Falcon and Winter Soldier was going to be an hour long, and that was not the case. Yeah, it was. Well, he also yeah. said it was going to be an hour long for WandaVision. Right. We got, you yeah, know, you combine all of the episodes, and that's about an hour long. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think, I don't know what big is going to happen this next episode, but I think we're going to get Echo... Uh, working under kingpin i think that's going to be our big revelation this next yeah. episode we're getting yeah i would agree with that we're getting because that was the rumors like episode five we're getting kingpin or daredevil so i'm guessing it's gonna be kingpin now at this point i'm hoping that the next episode is like just more action than anything and i want kate to be absent i want clint to just like get slapped around i want a lot of action Ooh, yeah and then like some sort of 11th hour appearance of kate and maybe yeah. the larp team to show that like <laughs> you can't do this alone oh, you need the hawkeye they'll get killed yeah oh the other thing i would i would think with this next episode does anything play in to spider-man that would be coming up the following day they've been playing think, this very low uh, like i think that that would make sense that they would bring kingpin in because I don't think they'll do Daredevil, but I think they would bring Kingpin in, and then, yep. then like the next day, it would be Spider Man. And then the, if they show Daredevil, then it yeah. all connects. So it's kind I of just more see. of like a, more of that than like something actually tied. So I'll in. make I'll make this like announcement now. If we get Kingpin tomorrow, we yeah. will have Daredevil in Spider Man. Because that that's what I thought. It's like is this is so like what was it the the. The end game happened in October, right? Right. Isn't that the time like the timeline? Is this Christmas like that same year Christmas, or is it a year later Christmas? That's a good question. Because it's, it's, it's gotta be it's gotta be this later. year because because the no, no way home or um far from home ep- one is six months after that. So that'd be kind of weird if that we've already gone basically a whole year after it. If you if you follow what I'm saying. I would assume it's a year because like the world is already like back together and they have like the rogers musical and everything like but that could have already they, been in the works yeah plus if they don't it, if they don't the world's like, like like working already like yeah i don't know so spider-man well, what, what, obviously what did they say the about of madness and if and if yeah. those stakes are so yeah. big if they if something happens in multiverse of madness and they don't mention it in hawkeye like a few months later obviously like that's a big mess up so my guess is this this is oh, right after dude this just spotted my head just like in that venom movie what if like the kingpin no, that's in this universe like phases and turns into vincent d'onofrio's kingpin i would love that like that would be a tie-in i would love it there you go i think that's too boom right to check a little too deep i don't think people would get it <laughs> it's too deep <laughs> It's too. It's too. Deep I would have because, to watch like, the second Venom movie to understand work. this reference. Yeah, yeah. I, and I don't think Marvel is banking on people seeing the second sure. Venom movie yet. <laughs> to understand this one. I haven't seen it. Uh, <laughs> Whatever, Doc. It's not for you. Was it good? What was your rating on on Let There Be Carnage? Let's um, throw that out there, because because Max won't let you talk about it when he's on. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> this is your time to shine. Tell um, us all about Venom. Well. I think Venom 2, I think, isn't as good as the first Venom. It's not as good as the first one? Yeah, it's not. Oh, no. I thought the first one was trash. <laughs> okay. oh, really? Have you not Stop seen it. the second one yet? I no. haven't seen the second one. Oh, well, I, th- I thought it was serviceable. I'd give it a 4.5. It wasn't the little... best thing I've ever seen. Now it's I'm definitely really... be- better than the Goofy movie. I just want to see more it from Woody Harrelson as a villain. Yeah, it was pretty good. You just say it was I better mean... than the Goofy movie? Yeah, better rating. Oh what the hell is wrong with you? What are you? Yeah. Okay, uh, guys, that's you all just, we have time for tonight. Like, Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> what a monster! Oh. You chose violence, yeah. my guy. My goodness, I always that choose is violence. ridiculous. Unhinged. That's the dumbest thing. Yeah, I have whatever, really dumb whatever, takes, bro. Grow right? up. All right, let, I, let's put a cap on <laughs> Hawkeye because I'm getting I, out I, Infinity so Bros much. disassembled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, give me your rating for this episode i'll start with mine i think it's a five out of six i think it was lacking some things um mark what is your rating of this episode i'd give it a 5.2 kind of same thing lacking some things i thought the the fight scenes can be better in my you know just being going through falcon winter soldier but that's probably not what i should expect out of this show i think we're getting more of like a a drama than an action but you know it is what it is robbie I'm going to give it a, a 4.7. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Um, 
like like the the whole fight scene was very CW esque. He's not like the um, other and girls. Then, he's like, different. He's not like the other guys. He's different. <laughs> he has different <laughs> ideas. Um, and then like we we mentioned it, but there, there's an Avenger in your living room, and it's like totally normal. And then like the cop that just like <laughs> breaks the law. Yeah, for like, no. Yeah. Like there's those little things that like they but see, have to do to make the story sure. go. But, but pulls, like yeah, I can scene. watch and be like, but that would happen in the sense. comic book. Like you, you gotta stop basing it in what would happen in real life. Like this is a comic book sh- well, show. Marvel wants comic book to em- base elements. My, Marvel wants to be yeah. all about like keeping up to dates on current trends. So I guess cops. Breaking there's the law a is frick, one of them. There's a freaking elf or what dwarf or whatever the thing in Eternals. Like we got one of those Pip or whatever his name is. Pip. It, yeah, I we're, we're not we're not hard. dealing in real world stuff anymore. I find, well, I find that. Hey, speaking of Eternals, I finally saw Eternals. Well, save it for the weekend. hot snot. Hold on. Oh, we're doing hot snot. Yes. All right. Oh, you know what? Let's just do it, Robbie. Plug. Hot snot. Go. Are we just? Oh, 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 uh, uh, oh wait. Hold okay. on. Uh, Bumper. Uh, uh, hot or snot? <laughs> Go. Go. Okay. Um, <laughs> hot or snot? I'll, I'll do. Ooh, where do I put Eternals? I, I would hot Eternals. I think it was better than what I expected it to be. Um, but I think I left with more questions than answers, which I think is kind of what they want anyway. Um, wasn't really surprised by the villain turnout at the end. I, I leaned to Jessica and told her that he was going to be the villain like the first time we saw them back in the real world. Um I really enjoyed some of the character interactions. I think those characters have a lot of fun things to do, but like this, this just they're just an old Justice League. So sure. I mean, if they want an old Justice League with really large like celestials, well, there there you go. You did it. Well done, Marvel. Congrats. Um You did it. Um I would give it a I'd give it a four out of six. Hmm. So like it's watchable. There's some entertaining moments. Max thought I was gonna hate it, which I was a little offended by like i don't know why i would hate it it's just the justice league um sure but no i i, I it was enjoyable i would watch it again that's good um, am i just gonna keep going yeah am just I keep doing... going with your hot and snot okay and then my my another big hot for me and obviously if you follow us on anything you've seen that i'm posting all the time and streaming all the time but just halo i'm just i i'm my wife hates me the last two weeks. <laughs> my kids don't know my name. Yeah. Um, they just say, that guy in the room? Who is that? That handsome man um, with I've the controller. Been playing, <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Halo. Nice. And I am just so happy to have like a good Halo back in my life. Yeah. Um, playing through the campaign now on our Twitch channel. Um, rocking it in multiplayer. Um, I'm, just, I'm just so happy to have Halo back. We're happy for you. Robbie. Um, you know, I just I wish my friends would could play with me. That's that's I wish my, my biggest PC thing. Was I wish garbage and I could play. With I wish you. Zane would like like buy into actually being a gamer yeah. and like go buy yeah. an Xbox so he could play Halo. Zane, stream this with Robbie. Get a stream set up. Finally, the fans demand it. Scott Higa Zane, messages me every morning and he says, "Is today the day, Papa?" And I say, "No." Zane has rejected it's you not, once more. It's not the day, son. <laughs> Today's not the day. Is that all um, your hot and snot, or you got anything else for us? You know, I really didn't think about this too much. How embarrassing! So I think I think that's kind of all you can I blame have, it on. Have anything else? I'll I'll interject later because sure. that's just kind of what I do. All right, Mark, what do you got for us? Well, you know, I mean, I've wanted to save this for our hundredth episode that's coming up, um, you know, a month. But uh, I want to do. I just want to say this because it's going to be a snot, and they're not here to defend themselves. Yes. So it'll be good to get something to the ether and then them the scramble. Yeah. So I'm listening to I'm catching up on my uh, uh Christian nerd podcast. <laughs> oh, I know where this is from. Okay. And I think. And Scott had mentioned that both Isaac and Max had thanked him mm. in one form or another about Ted Lasso to getting them onto Ted Lasso. And I'm like, I'm like, bleep, bleep, bleep. Um <laughs> I talked about these to these guys about Ted Lasso after I watched it because I was the first Infinity Bro to have yeah. Apple TV. Yeah. And like to to no response. And then, you know, Scott has to listen, has to watch it and then tells tells these guys to watch it. And then they finally watch it. So it's like, do, 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 does someone Mark care about matter? my opinion? Yeah. 
Mark wants his day. So I feel he like I'm taking crazy sun. pills, and I'm like, listen to Scott say this. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like livid, <laughs> losing that. my mind. That's the type of petty that I I, I uh, aspire to, to be. Yeah. This is kind so of the beginning of our friend group, though, because like Mark always comes out <laughs> with like the bangers, and he's like, "Hey, you guys got to get on on this." And then nobody listens to him. And then, and then like, it's like a month or two later. Yeah. Then, it, then <laughs> someone else watches it. it in the group. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we, guys, we got to watch it. How did right. nobody tell us about this? Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> Do you um, have any other? So that's my, that's my only hot. Okay. Or my snot. Um, gosh, for hot. Gosh, I don't know if anything's... Like, I got Vanguard. The sure. Call of Duty Vanguard. That's been fun. Um, I feel like that? I have no time. So it's like, I, I bought that. Well... I was told by one of our friends, mutual friends, that it's just like Modern Warfare or Call of Duty uh, World at War. So I'm like, okay, one, that's back That's back when I used to play Call of Duty and liked it. Is that the uh, one true Robbie that, that gave yes, you a recommendation? the one that has the full name, that owns the full name of he Robbie Robert. Yes. No, um, so I'm like, okay, I'll get it back into this. And, you know, I just feel like I never have time to play video games. And then I'm thinking, you know, still more Scott Higa words into my head. Like once I have like, the baby... You have I'm gonna have no time, time, so it's like I gotta catch up on this yeah. Vanguard stuff. So that's, that's where I'm at. I, I've, I've been, heard uh, I've been about ha- that. I've heard the zombie mode is fantastic. I liked it. The the story yeah. mode is garbage, uh, and the multiplayer is pretty good. Yeah, I probably won't play the the campaign, but that makes sense. So far, I've had fun playing it. Um, I would say, I guess I'll go to hot. I've been I've been rewatching the Marvel, the Disney Plus Marvel shows again. Mm-hmm. Still love them all. WandaVision still on top. Um, wow. But I did. I just finished up Loki, and I'm thinking, I think we're gonna find out in Loki that the plan all along obviously was for uh, Sylvie and Loki to overthrow that version of Kang. Right. So I, because I think a different Kang was helping out uh, Renslayer. So I went back and watched uh, Loki, and that one holds up. I was yeah, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it, even the second time around. Um, I would. If you're going to watch Spider-Man, um, obviously in the next couple weeks, or this week actually, um, go watch Loki. Loki's definitely like, a must-watch. You yeah. have to. Um, yep. Is that all your hot and snot, Mark? Uh, sure. Okay. Why not? Oh, my hot. I guess another hot would be Christmas is coming up too. So well, like, I don't know how many hot. that episode. Six out of so six. like, we all love Christmas. Hot. Yeah, six out of six Christmas. There you go. Um, I have two. I have two hots to add. Sure. Because I'm just just hot. 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 Hot's what <laughs> yeah. I do. Hot on hot. Um, the Gardens of the Galaxy game, I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast yet. I want to say Isaac that did, game, but maybe not. He's been talking about it I don't in, know if he, in chat. I don't think he ever got it, actually. I think he was talking about getting it, but... So I bought this on Black <laughs> Friday. The game's awesome. Like, it's oh. what it's what the Avengers game should have been. It's just a linear storyline. You play as the Guardians, and there's a lot of really fun back and forth. Like, mm. it is a blast to play. And it's like, it's quick missions. They're all fun and unique. Um, game is just awesome. The okay. other hot is PlayStation is reportedly going to try to make a competitor to Xbox's mm, Game Pass. Yes, that's right. I have I have said on this podcast that, maybe not on the podcast, on the stream I have said that Xbox Game Pass, um, specifically the Xbox Ultimate Game Pass, is the best thing in video games. Absolutely. Today. Like, there is nothing that compares to what Game Pass gives you, because just this last month, we had Halo Infinite, a $60 game, for free. Forza 5, a $60 game, for free. Um, and Back for Blood, a $40 game, for free. And that's just, like, the and big, what do you pay? Headliners. Like, per you month? Pay, I think it's $120 a year right. or something like oh. that. And you just like get these games for free, like, to download into your library and yes. play them yeah, it's, you it's want? Play, yeah, it's PlayStation Plus, but, like, with a ton of games it's, it's like playstation so much, plus and playstation now had a baby but also put good, yeah. good games on there yeah like which is like the only way playstation can compete is if they make playstation now and playstation plus like all Package one two. thing and bring the price way down yeah. because playstation now is still more expensive i believe i think it's like 15 a month ultimate and you, you don't get new yeah. games it's it's a lot of and i believe yeah and i believe the xbox ultimate pass is 12 dollars a month if you, if you did it by month yeah um, but they give out brand new games like every oh, other month or so. Yeah. So like, so if you buy if you buy two games a year, Xbox Game Pass is worth the worth price. It. Absolutely. So that that's my big. 
I, and I'm I'm hoping that PlayStation can compete because I'm more of a PlayStation guy at heart, unless it's Halo. Um, so I hope that PlayStation can make something that's competitive because it would be hard to get me to like because I don't want to pay for both really. It would be hard to get me to switch right sure. now to go to anything else. I understand that. All right, my hot is um, I finally got around to watching Castlevania on Netflix. Um, oh yeah, tell me about it. I, I'm I'm only barely into the first season, but man, do I love this! It is not at all what I expected. Uh, the storyline is fantastic. The voice acting is great. Um, the art style is fairly impressive. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I think. We had Tomer from MTG Goldfish on here who talked about it a little bit. And um, I've just been hearing good things about it. So I was like, well, we'll dip my toe in. I don't really have a good show to watch right now while I'm waiting for Hawkeye episodes. And man, I'm loving it. Um, on the flip side of that coin, Netflix's live action of Cowboy Bebop. Did you catch this, Robbie? I have started it. Um, I've tried not to like listen to too many people because I don't know Cowboy Bebop that well. Okay. I didn't watch that as a kid so it's all I've very new to me one episode into that and i'm also kind of in the same boat i watched some of it on toonami when i was little yeah. so yeah. that's about it yeah i caught glimpses of it on toonami and I-, I enjoyed episode one i've heard a lot of a lot of a uh, negative feedback on it but i'd love to hear your take on it i i'm not enjoying this at all there are <laughs> oh, okay. there are parts that this I like. is crap. Um, I think the casting for Jet was fantastic. Actually, I think the casting across the board was fantastic, except for Ed. But Ed doesn't really translate well in the live action. Um, yeah, it's like a lot of the writing. I think you have to. There, there's an inherent risk in converting an anime to live action, which is like some things just don't work live action. Um, and I think Ed, with all the eccentricities, just doesn't work live action, especially the way that they did it. And I don't know, man, this series did not do it for me. I know we talked to the Geek Nation guys on Facebook quite a bit, and uh, I think more than a few of them liked it. So maybe this is just, you know, it's not for me. But yeah, I was I was not a fan of not enjoying this. See, I'm surprised because I, I almost think like if you haven't watched the anime at all, like maybe you enjoy this. I'm hoping so. And like I'm Because I well, really enjoyed episode one. I don't know about you, Mark. Yeah, like I exactly. I think if you're coming with a blank slate to this, it's fun. Like the what's that one game, the Monster Hunter that you guys liked? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And like I enjoyed that movie. Oh that movie. And fresh. never yeah, exactly. I and I never played the game. I also played the games religiously. So, like, there, yeah, there's. it just depends on how it sure. hits you and maybe the yeah. right attitude you have or, you know, mentality going into stuff. Because that's. I could be taking this way too how everything kind of that's, works. That's probably on me. But yeah, for my money, I did not enjoy it. Um, yeah. My other snot. So, Isaac has been playing this on stream. It's, um, I think it's Godsend or Godfall. What's the name of the. Godfall. 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 Yep. It's the free PlayStation <clears throat> Plus game. They give yep. you like a diminished version of it. You don't actually get the full version of the game with PlayStation Plus, Plus which what? was a miss. And then it didn't look that fun to me. Uh, there was a lot to be done in the menus, which I'm not a fan of unless it's like Monster Hunter and I've already committed the time to learning that system. Um, and then just like the fact that you can't progress unless you buy the full game. It kind of just starts you in the end game was pretty meh for me. Um, obviously Isaac was fantastic to watch that stream, but I enjoyed the dialogue that we had about buying vacuums for watching and play <laughs> that game. Um, and obviously not a discredit a to Isaac. He did fantastic, but yeah, it just didn't, it didn't hit it for me. Um, weird. Yeah. Uh, it looks cool. Like that's one of those games where like the poster looks fantastic. Maybe looks better than the game actually is. <laughs> uh, mortal shell, which is the other one that came with that is like a, it, it's a dark souls S game. And that one I played literally a couple minutes of, and I'm already hooked on the idea of it. It's not enough to pull me away from my Dark Souls 3 grind that I've been on, but it still looks fantastic. I'm snotting you still playing Dark Souls. Oh, it's so, I, <laughs> I just I have to get it out of my system because I want to play Elden Ring and I can't till February. Um, Fair enough. So that's, that's sort of where we're at with that. Anything else from you guys before we get rolling uh, with the... Yes, I actually did think of another please, one. Please, please and thank you. The Sonic the Hedgehog oh, yes. 2 movie trailer came out, and it was excellent. I don't know 
I, we've talked about the Sonic movie on here, I believe. Yeah. And it was, Sonic might be the only good video game movie I loved it. Ever? Yeah. Like, is, is, I'm tr- I was trying to think of other good video, because, like, that's a, that's a thing, like, where video game movies struggle to be good. Like, Sonic was at least good. Like, it wasn't, like, an amazing movie, but, like, I probably watched it a, quite a few times. My kids really enjoy it. The second trailer, or the, the first trailer for the second one was awesome. Like, you got to see Tails, oh, yeah. Knuckles, uh, Dr. Uh, Robotnik. Robotnik, right? man. Yep. Yeah. Eggman is back, and he's got the big mustache. Jim Carrey, you know, is back in that role, and it it looks have hilarious, seen, and I can't wait for it. Have you guys seen the internet just, like... It, it's literally just people thirsty over Idris Elba <clears throat> and asking like how, oh, yeah. and this is, this is peak like internet culture asking like how yeah. sensual knuckles is going to get like, that's just the, oh, the like, th- why? <laughs> because, um, because they heard his voice behind knuckles and like that poor man generation like, of people like, were awoken to like the furry ideology it was it's the whole dang it robert it's yeah (laughs) it's it's his it's his line from the office where he's like yeah i understand the effect that i have on women that's like peak idris alba Um, it's like henry cavill to me one more one more like tangentially related thing um it's been announced that uh 007 all they care about is that it is a British, I believe they said it was a British man. Let me double, just double check that. Beyond that, there's no like prereq. Yeah, I think that was pretty much on the point. Which is interesting because they specifically said, <clears throat> I, I should probably double check this quote, but I believe they specifically said it was a man. Um, but I'm interested in, to see like how they change the 007 formula going forward. And one of the fan castings that I've seen is obviously Henry Cavill, but Idris Elba is also high on the list. What do no, they man. do? The, the dude Cavill... from Bridgerton. That's what you, that's what you do. I don't know what that is. I just want oh, a really bad. skinny, like, Alan I, I would just imagine your wife watched that show. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. She did, but I didn't watch it. Oh, hey, my bad. I guess I didn't yeah. watch it either. I want, like, a, a, my wife. a not, sure like... <laughs> I mean, Alan Redmayne's actually not that bad looking of a guy, but, like, um, he's not a, a big, stocky dude. So, the, so Henry anyway. Cavill was actually already in, like, The <laughs> Man from Uncle, which is, like... Yeah, opposite basically, double, sure. Basically, yeah, like 007. A, like, so I wonder. Adjacent, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they'd uh, like. And that movie was good. Like, that's another that movie. Great that, movie. Yeah. He was also in that Superman, movie... but that's not going to stop me from throwing him as a Sentry or Hercules. Sure. Oh well, my gosh, Hercules. Depends on if he, depends on my if he goodness, a or not. that's who he should be. Okay, hold on, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hercules. We, we, we're going we too get... long. Max is going to hate us. I know. Oh, screw, screw, screw Max. Let's keep going. This is what the fans yeah, this want. This is the Henry Cavill episode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Henry Cavill is Hercules, and then give us Amadeus Cho Hulk. Bam. That's all I want. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Who would play him though? That buddy cop movie. I have no idea. Um. Oh, okay. oh dang. I was I was about to say the 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 boy from Shang Chi, but obviously like that's the dumbest thing I could say. Um, see see my mind instantly went to uh, the the big dude in Eternals. The guy that protects Athena, mm. or Athena, mm. sorry. Gilgamesh, uh, right? Gilgamesh, I, I think yeah. if you're going to do Amadeus Cho, you have to do it with somebody young. Um, there's yeah, a, that's true. There's yeah, an actor young. on Netflix. Gosh, I got to think of what the name of those movies are. <clears throat> They're like cheesy chick flick movies. Um, I think he was in... We could just bring the kid from uh, uh, Avatar in. Oh, I know who you're talking about, the Jared. The kid from like 13 um, Reasons Why he's the... like. Yes, and he's also in like the, the stupid love. Like there's two of them. Yeah. I know, I know who you're talking about. He's People like know who really, you're talking about. So. Uh, buff. I think he's Filipino. Oh my gosh. I feel bad if I get that wrong. But uh, he's a fantastic actor. And I would. He's actually Caucasian. Yeah. <laughs> just a <laughs> white guy. Just, just really tan. Um, Jeez, Jira. He would do, I think he would do phenomenal in this. Yeah, that would be good. That would be a good cast. All right. Go. Um, gosh, we're so off the rails. Hey, Max. Thanks for Let's, let's wrap guy. it up. Screw you. Yeah, thanks, Max. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thank oh, you for before, joining us. Before we end. Gross- but yes. One more thing. Well, this uh, is going to tie into the. the I'll, we'll transition please. to ending. Thank you. Infinity Bros. Universe. Be on the lookout. We're going to do some giveaways. Oh. We'll probably do like you know, some just Q and A stuff that's on like Twitter. You just you know we put out a question, you answer it, and you get put into a, a thing. We draw a name, and then you get something. We can. We'll, do, po- hey, we'll post what we're giving away Mark, because we can do I, a, a wheel spin on the Twitch stream. 
and we can do that too so we could set it up that way but yeah i just set that up infinity bros universe be on the lookout for some giveaways happening to get yourself entered in um and yeah that's all i got with that all right make sure you follow us uh wherever you get your podcasts uh check us out on twitch check us out on tiktok uh all the social medias make sure you are prepared for january 2nd we have our 100th episode that will be live on twitch.tv slash the underscore infinities underscore bros. Um, that is 8 p.m. Central. Look forward to our next episode. We have one episode between then and now. Catch our streams. Uh, Robbie has been busy like pretty much every night that he's free. Uh, I normally do Team Rocket Tuesday. I didn't tonight because we were recording. And check out uh, Isaac early in the mornings for Thrifty Thursday. Um, be sure to look out for the giveaways oh, and- as well. Isaac has a new camera as well, so he's going to be looking pretty dang nice on Thursday. You're definitely going to want to check that People out. People will not be able to handle it. The, the, yeah, it's... the upgrade between you and Robbie, or sorry, you and Isaac has been, you guys just like exponentially get better and better setups. Meanwhile, like my setup has been good and then bad. You and then good the and dice then bad. Guy? You have... But um, the dice. yeah, check these guys out. They do phenomenal Twitch streams. Uh, mine is getting better because I've been resetting it up with the help of these guys. But uh, check us out on Twitch. Infinity Bros fans, thank you for listening. Wherever, however you're listening. We love you 3000. Have a fantastic evening. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to the Infinity Bros podcast. You can find the Infinity Bros on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Infinity Bros. Feel free to send listener feedback via email at infinitybrospodcast at gmail.com.